This is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, and it's a top contender for shoe of the year. Yo, what's going on? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a not only runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I want to talk to you guys all about the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. But before I do, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I bought myself. No one sent them to me and no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 and let's start with the specs. This is a 36 millimeter stack height shoe with an eight millimeter drop, giving us eight millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in this midsole, we've got two main components. First is Power Run P which is a beaded Piba foam, a racing caliber foam. And sandwiched in between the two layers of beaded Piba is a nylon plate which has wings which you could see both on the outside and on the inside of the shoe. You can even see the wing carbon fiber plate through this little window in the bottom of the shoe. And when you're down here, you can also notice that we have an updated rubber outsole pattern. I mean, generally it's kind of the same. There's a bunch of rubber in the forefoot and then two kind of like rings of rubber in the heel, which carries over from the design of last year. But this grid pattern is definitely different. There's more overall rubber coverage and the design pattern matches what we see in the Endorphin Speed 4's big brother, the Endorphin Pro 4. Moving to the upper, we have a change design here, which the type of mesh that we have here is a little bit different. It's stretchier and softer, and there's just something about it. Maybe it's just all the holes that are in here that kind of bother me a little bit. It looks a little bit less race and speed oriented and just a little bit more daily training, even a little bit frumpy, if I could put it that way. And that sensation carries over into the tongue. We have a similar type of material that's perforated type of mesh that's in the most of the tongue. But then at the top, we have kind of just two pieces of fabric sewn together with an awkward triangular shape that kind of pokes out a little bit funny onto the side of the shoe. It is a gusseted tongue though, so it's going to stay in place. And also that gusset provides a little bit of structure to the shoe when it's on your foot. Moving to the heel cup, we have pretty much no changes that I can tell from what we saw last year in the Endorphin Speed 3. We've got a minimal amount of padding throughout this heel cup, which is great to see. And then also a decent amount of structure in terms of an actual rigid cup for your heel to sit in. Altogether, all of these elements create a shoe that comes in at 8.2 ounces or 233 grams. Now that we've talked about what the shoe is like on paper, let's talk about what it's like IRL. And I gotta tell you, this shoe is beaded Piba at its finest. I absolutely am loving what I'm getting out of the Endorphin Speed 4. You're getting a really nice amount of impact absorption and then bounce at easy paces, but the shoe definitely shines once you're picking up the pace and moving a little bit faster. That beat up Piba really starts to come to life when you're putting a little bit more into each foot strike and pushing off a little bit harder as you're putting in more effort into the shoe. That rate of compression and decompression seems to change the faster you go or the more energy that you're putting into the shoe and it's responding really nicely anytime you pick up the pace above an easy level of effort. Strides are really fun in the shoe. The shoe feels lightweight and ready to turn over quickly. And marathon effort is effortless and lively. It's got that signature bounce that you think of when you think of a beaded Piba shoe. And the forefoot mechanics of this shoe definitely remind me very much of the Endorphin Pro 3, which I really enjoyed in the last version of that super shoe. Now, the one downside that I say that this shoe has is for me, I don't love it at some of the easy paces. And I know that I think that the Endorphin Speed has always been more of a tempo day shoe, a shoe you might reach for, for kind of anything from easy plus to workouts. Uh, but for a lot of you guys, the Endorphin Speed series has been your daily trainer of choice. For me though, the changes this year make it a little bit less good at that in my opinion. I feel like the 
flare in the heel has gotten even bigger and those gills create even more volume in the heel. So I feel like that heel gets a little bit clunky and that signature desire of Saucony shoes to add just a little hint of stability starts to creep in when I'm running with this shoe at easy efforts. And I think that's a combination of that chunky heel plus that winged nylon plate working together. I'm starting to feel like a little bit of like control elements starting to get into play, but Overall, for me, as someone who's very sensitive to motion control, it didn't bother me. So in that sense, I can live with it. And for some of you, that actually might be a feature. Now, I also think that the shoe got a little bit thicker through the middle of the foot, like underneath the arch. So again, for those of you who the Endorphin Speed Series has tipped in a little bit too much as you're running, uh, that you're gonna find to be a little bit more of a positive change. But for me, again, that all adds to like an element of clunkiness that I feel when the shoe is at easy paces. And I also feel like it's consistent with the way that they designed the upper, but I also feel like the upper is uncharacteristically a weak part of this Saucony shoe. Saucony normally makes some of the best fitting and most comfortable uppers. And I find that this one kind of just feels a little bit lackluster. It feels like it doesn't belong on an endorphin speed shoe. It feels like it maybe belongs on a ride or a guide or maybe on like an endorphin shift. But for the endorphin speed series, I want something that kind of feels more race oriented, but with daily training materials. And I feel like I'm just getting daily training materials when I'm looking at the shoe. And maybe part of that is just the gray color for me. Gray shoes just always feel a little bit sloppy. And so Part of that might just be my perception of the aesthetics, but I, I feel like there's a little bit of a tweak that needs to happen in the Dorfin Speed because it is a shoe that I think a lot of you guys are really going to enjoy for easy runs, but a lot of you guys are probably going to do a lot of workouts and marathon racing in this shoe, and I feel like the upper just isn't doing any favors. It's not holding us back by any means, but I feel like it could be so much better, especially since I've seen so much better in prior iterations of the Endorphin Speed. But overall, I think that the Endorphin Speed 4 is going to be shoe that some of you guys love for your easy days, that others will love for their workouts, and some people will even love for their marathon racing. In short, I think it's gonna be one of those shoes that's going to be pretty easy for me to recommend to a very wide range of runners out there, and that's why I think it's gonna be a top contender for shoe of the year. Now let's wrap up this video by talking about some of the pairing options if you want to put the Endorphin Speed 4 into a rotation, and then we'll talk about some potential alternatives when we get to the buying guide. For pairing options, I think that there are two shoes that you're really going to want to also have if you're using the Endorphin Speed 4 in your rotation, and that's going to be a recovery run, easy run shoe, something that can go even more chill than the Endorphin Speed can, and then also a racing shoe. For that chill shoe, I think we can stay in the Saucony family and go with the Triumph. I have the Triumph RFG, which is a more eco-friendly version of the Triumph. There's just a lot more cushion in this shoe, and it's definitely going to be your road warrior. And then when it comes to your racing and your toughest workouts, I think that you could bump up to the Endorphin Pro 4. With this upgrade, you are getting a carbon fiber plate rather than the nylon plate, and you're also getting an insert of Power Run HG, which is Saucony's other, even more premier, racing foam. You're also getting a quite a bit of weight reduction once you bump up to the pro level. And those three will make for a pretty nice Saucony set for your next marathon. Now let's talk about the buying guide and some alternatives. The Endorphin Speed 4 comes in at $170, which I feel like is probably going to be a really good price for this shoe. But let's take a look at some of the competition. Now, one of the shoes that comes to mind first when I think about this shoe as a shoe that's going to be a really great workout shoe for a lot of people, a daily trainer for a lot of people, and a race shoe for some people is going to be the Solomon S-Lab Spectre. But unfortunately, this shoe comes in at $250, or at least that was its original price. I think it got reduced to $220. Uh, and right now, I can't even find it on the Solomon website. So it's not really a shoe I can recommend, but this is another shoe that kind of checks all the same boxes that the Endorphin Speed does. But let me talk about some shoes that I do think you can still get. And the first one that I'm going to talk about is the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. This is my shoe of the year last year, and it also does a lot of the same things that the Endorphin Speed does. It has a race day foam up top with another really nice foam, Puma's 
nitro foam in the heel. This one has a carbon fiber plate and a daily trainer style upper. So it's race tuned, but also at the same time built for a lot of miles and a lot of workouts. This shoe's been out for a while, so I was hoping that it'd be on sale, but it only seems to be available at full retail of 160, but even then you're still saving $10 over the endorphin speed. And then the other shoe that I think we should take a look at is from newcomer to the performance running market, and that's Tier. You might know them from the gym or from the pool, but they're making really great race product right now. And this is their answer to the Endorphin Speed 4. Now there's the Tier Valkyrie Carbon, which is kind of analogous to the Endorphin Pro 4. And this is the Valkyrie Speedworks. Now I haven't put my review of this shoe out yet, but I have had a couple of runs in it already. And I could tell you that these two shoes line up really closely. It's got a daily training type of upper, a beaded Piba foam, and a nylon plate in between those two layers of foam. And I think these two shoes track very closely to each other. And I actually thought that they might be almost clones, but there are some slight differences to the Valkyrie Speedworks. And I think that for those of you who want an even more neutral foam, I feel like the Speedworks is going to be the option for you. If you want a little bit more of that Saucony hint of stability, then the Endorphin Speed 4 is going to be for you. The Valkyrie Speedwork comes in at the same price as the Endorphin Speed 4 at $170. So this is probably the closest head to head comparison of any two shoes that I think we're going to see in 20. 24. Now, the last shoe that I think we definitely need to talk about is last year's Endorphin Speed 3. Now, this is a shoe that so many of you really enjoyed. It just wasn't a shoe that worked for me. I'm not sure what it was about the geometry of the shoe. Maybe it was this little rubber strip down the center of the forefoot, but something about it after about 5K of running just created a pain in my foot, and I really just couldn't run in this shoe, which is a shame because when I could run in this shoe, there was a really nice airiness, a really nice bounce to the foam in this shoe that made it a very fun shoe for running fast. And right now, the Endorphin Speed 3 is discounted to $125, so that's a really great bargain. So for those of you who can run in the Endorphin Speed 3, I'd say get another Endorphin Speed 3 for now, and then you can upgrade to the Endorphin Speed 4 for later. But for those of you who have sensitive forefoot areas that sometimes you get hot spots and then pains in the pads of your feet, I'd say go with the Endorphin Speed 4. It doesn't seem to have that same issue for me that the Endorphin Speed 3 three did. So those are my thoughts on the Endorphin Speed 4. Definitely going to be a shoe that's a top of a lot of runners lists for 2024. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop with the last thing I do Monday through Friday over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys over there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?